Hello friends, my name is Theo and today in this exciting Mr. Media tutorial, we'll be talking about why everybody loves this new color warp tool inside of DaVinci Resolve 17 and we're going to go over how to use it. So this is something that we've all wanted in DaVinci Resolve for forever now and a while ago you could get this by using either the Nob Color Remap plugin, which is a great little plugin, or also to a lesser extent the 3D LUT Creator plugin. But now it's built in natively, so you know basically as long as it works, it's probably going to be the one that I use. So save you a couple hundred bucks and save us all a little bit of time. So here, the color warper tool. What this represents is you see each of these points is a hue and a saturation value. The point that we manipulate represents the color in our image, and then as we move it around, that changes that color to the new color that we see in the background of the graph. And you can see as we move our color picker around our viewer, that changes what point is being selected in our color warper control with those little crosshairs. So let's say we select this way overly blue quilt here. You see that the crosshairs aren't quite on our dot. So we'll fix that in a bit. But right now you can see if we select one that's close to it and we move the hue by moving it radially, that changes just the hue of those blues. And we can change it the other way too, make them all purple. You know, very neat, very psychedelic. And then if we move it in towards the center, that decreases the saturation. So here, you can see as we pull this in, it gets less saturated, and especially if we grab like one of these really highly saturated points, bring them all in, you see that starts to dull it down. If we move this one in too, now there's no more blue in that shot at all. Maybe that's what you want, and maybe it isn't. But you can see we've got this great control to control our hue and our saturation which of course we could do before with our normal curves by going to hue versus hue and changing this around and then going to hue versus saturation and changing this around. But you see it's much easier. Oops, looks like signal flow is a bit of an issue there. So there we go. You can see that can be a little confusing having to still change it on the blue even if the viewer shows it as pink. So if we reset these and this, you can see just how much easier that same correction is to do here, just moving your, your one point around nice and quick. And of course, you can also click here and drag around, and that is pretty nice as well. And by default, this is in the HSP color space. This is hue, saturation, and perceived lightness. But there's also HSV for hue, saturation, value, HSL for hue, saturation, lightness, HSY for HSY is in the Y component of video, like YCBCR. So that's another method of calculating luminance. Apparently, HSY is like a very fast way of doing this, but I don't think it's really going to matter in Resolve. Of course, we also have HSP log, but for most of us, we need to stay at HSP and be totally happy the whole time. Also, it should be noted right now that I am using the new DaVinci RGB color managed workspace with the DaVinci wide gamut enabled. And so far I've been really liking the results I'm getting from it, but you can of course use this in any of your other preferred working color spaces. Now I've already went over what these little points do, but we have some more controls that can change how these points behave. So down here, we can increase the resolution of our hue rings and our saturation columns. And you see right now they're linked together. So you get more of all of those, but say you don't need a lot of you know, saturation control, you can unlink these. And then if you want a lot of hue control, we can make this 24. And look at that. Look at all those points. Let's reset that. And now you see if we go, we can get real close on that, that quilt and we can drag that in and make it much less distracting in the shot. Just that easily. I'll probably pull this point in also. But you can also see if we grab these points, it's moving a lot of the other points around it, especially up and down here. So let's reset this. And we can change how many points we are moving around by changing this auto lock feature. So if I turn this on, you see if I click this point, it automatically creates anchors on these other two points around it. So you can stay a little locked in there. We can change this auto lock to one point. And now we're just moving this one point around doing not very much in this particular shot. This would be a very handy thing to be able to use. Also, you can select a range up here of all your points and you can move these around. And you can also use some of these other tools up here, like this pull points tool. You see this affects everything, not just selected, but this you know, can create all sorts of crazy results, pulling things in closer. So you want to decrease the saturation of the entire image in an interesting way. That's one way of doing it. And you've also got the push points. So you can use that like a vibrance control, the most over-engineered vibrance control ever. Excellent. You can also pin and depin points. So if we say 
I for sure don't want her skin tone to move in. 24 might be a few too many points here. Let's go to something like 16 or 12. There we go. And that should be fine. We can click and pin that point. You see now it's pinned. And if we move another point around this without auto lock on, see we're moving those other points above it, but we're, we're nailing those skin tones. So this would probably be more useful if you're doing something like over here, keeping those together. And then also we can draw a selection here. So we can say, I'm gonna select all those points and then move this column around. Speaking of moving columns and circles around, we can also select a whole column by clicking this. So this selects the whole column and we can move it this way or, or down and let's select a better one so we can see a little better. So here, let's select this blue column right here. You can see you can move this around. And we also have other controls down here to have a little more finer adjustment by adjusting our hue. And you see this is just changing the angle of this whole column. Of course, we also have the saturation control for the same thing, bringing that in some. And also have this luminance control, which we'll get into in a little bit. So this luma control isn't accessible in this current window. We'll go over to the color luma curves in just a bit. But first, let's finish talking about these tools. So we can also select a whole ring. So it's like this. Select the whole ring. You can move this around. Or, of course, most interesting thing is rotate it. Look at that. It looks terrible. Great job. But you can, of course, do very interesting things with that. You can also convert a selected point to a pin point. So just like we did with the skin tones before, let's say we want that point, then make it a pin. And we can invert our selection. So if we've drawn a selection over here, we say, I want everything that's not this. Boom, invert selection, just like that. We can, of course, also contract it and expand it. So you really have a huge amount of tools to get exactly what you need here. And you can see, especially if you just like max this bad boy out with 24 by 16, you know, tools like this can be pretty handy. So I'm not sure what you're doing that you need this many points, but I'm 100% sure that there is someone in the comments that's going to be like, I need exactly this many points to do my whatever I do. So those are always interesting to see. That is the basics of this one. And then we can hop over into our chroma versus luma curves. You can see that we can control the saturation of a particular hue on our X axis and luminance on our Y axis. And we can also go through the same color spaces as before. So we want to go HSY, boop, there they are. And back to HSP. And then we can change which hues are represented here by changing our hue axis angle. So moving that around, you can see how those change. And then of course we also have controls just like before for adding in way more and we can link and unlink those. And we also have the same controls too. Click on the image and say, we want this point, we want to increase the saturation here and really make this yellow. A very cool wonder wheel type effect. You know, that's maybe a little bit jaundice -y, but previously I've always had such a tough time getting yellows to really come out in a shot. So maybe this is the tool that finally gets me making a lot more yellowy grades. That would be great. So you can see just that fast, you really amp that up. And then we can of course reduce the saturation of our blues some by going like this, just like we did in that other one. And maybe we think they're too bright. We can bring the luminance of our blues down too. And yeah, say so you want this point. Yep. So I can make that quilt really dark. You know, this is probably a bit much, but you can see just that fast you can make huge before I'm just boom, Taylor Band. And now it's Steffi Moore. So these are incredible tools that I'm so happy to have in Resolve. I hope that you have as good of a time using them as I've had playing around with them so far. I know previously we had the option to use them, but I think I'll find myself using these even more now that they're available. So also a quick little plug, this is some footage from a DaVinci Resolve 17 course that I'm going to be putting out uh, hopefully by the end of the year. So stick around for that. I'll have more information later on, but I know for those of you who stick around to the end of the tutorial, you're probably interested in that. So stick around, I'll have more information later, but just letting you know that a very in-depth, my goodness, it's a huge project, a very in-depth DaVinci Resolve course is coming out soon, and I'm pretty excited for it. Hopefully you're excited for it too. But Anyway, I'll call that the end of the video. Once again, I've been Theo with Mies Meter. Have a great day, and I will see you next time. Bye.